Hey folks, so a little bit different video this week. Um, I want to take you through my current setup. Uh, the reason for that is I'm planning on doing a couple different mods um, coming up in the next couple weeks. I actually want these these mod videos to, to be helpful. Um, the information is very scattered around the forums and different websites. So I'm hoping to do some mod videos where it's pretty step by step, pretty detailed on how I got things to work on my mill. But to do that, I want to do this video kind of as a baseline to show you exactly what my um, current setup is. That way, when you're watching the mod video, you already know um, if this setup is identical to yours, similar to yours, or completely different, um, what pieces of information you can take away and uh, not blow up your mill. Also, if you're a beginner and you haven't gotten a mill yet, you can kind of look at what I've got. I'm, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some of my gripes, complaints, and some of the things that I like about my setup. All right, folks, so for starters, I'm gonna go over my mill. This is a just Harbor Freight uh, mini mill. The Tons of brands make these. Uh, the, the company that actually makes them in China is called Sieg, S-I-E-G. This is the X2 mini mill. Um, Harbor Freight's got them for, oh boy, I bought this a few years ago. I paid like 450 bucks with a 20% off coupon. So pretty inexpensive. Um, when you buy it, obviously it's not CNC'd. It's got little handles for you to rotate the axes and a big handle up here like a drill press would have um, with a fine adjustment also on there for the Z. So it doesn't have good ball screws either. It's got lead screws with a ton of backlash. So like a ton of backlash. <laughs> it's a 110 machine. I guess that's probably important for people like me that don't have 220 running everywhere in their house. And uh, I guess one major note that something that I would do differently is the Harbor Freight ones have this feature, feature where they can rotate the, the head um, different angles about 45 degrees each direction. Um, so what that leads to though is that the very back of here where the column attaches to the base is held on with one bolt. One big bolt but still one bolt. So that means this entire top portion is held on to this machine with one big bolt so that every time this thing is vibrating it's got one bolt, it's got one pivot point so this head is not very rigid at all. So if I were to do this differently, I would probably buy uh, one of the other brands. Um, I think Little Machine Shop is probably the way to go because they've got a solid um, column that mounts to the bottom with like, I think it's four pretty good sized bolts that mount to the base. So, so that's probably the biggest downside of the Harbor Freight Mill. Other than that, I think it's the cheapest one you can get, especially with a coupon. Um, and other, other than that, they're all fairly similar. Little Machine Shop has taken it up a notch and kind of provided better motors and some extra travel and that sort of thing. But um, all the other brands are pretty much going to get the same thing. So that's the mill. Alright, so as far as the mechanical conversion, we've got stepper motors obviously for each axis and then um, the motor mounts and ball screws. They came from CNC Fusion, so easy bolt-on kit, about 600 bucks. Maybe 630, something like that. Um, so they give you the ball screws, ball nuts, motor mounts. Yeah, I think that's about it. Takes us up to the steppers. I bought all my electronics on eBay. So these are Long's motors, um, 400. I don't know, part of the description said 400 ounce inch. The other part said 425, so not a big difference either way. But I've got all three of my motors are the same. If you look up on eBay, you know, three axis CNC kit, you'll find all sorts of these. So stepper motors, that's what's going to be driving it. Uh, and then, all right, so over here is my control board. Um, I know it's kind of rinky dink and I need to, to probably get it in a good enclosure. Um, so you saw the steppers on the actual mill. Those wires that come out of the steppers are going into, um, they each have one of these. So I got three stepper drivers. Um, also, all this stuff came from Long's Motor. One, one eBay purchase gets you all of this. Uh, so these stepper drivers, their job is basically to take a small input signal and then ramp it up to provide actual real power to the steppers. So 
these steppers or, or stepper drivers are getting their their signals from this breakout board and it, they're getting their actual raw power from these two power supplies these are 36 volt um, I think they're 350 watt um, power supplies so I don't know why they made the kit with two when you got three axes I guess um, three axes was too much for one of these but but um, you can run two off of one so I've got two going to I think this one and one going to this one and it works fine just to recap as far as steppers raw power comes from here through here to the drivers signal to for when the stepper moves in which direction comes from here to these to the stepper this guy is just your normal printer port off of an old school computer and um, it is fed or that is where the signals are fed from my Linux CNC software I spent oh boy probably two solid weeks looking at all the different free software CAD and CAM packages and uh, what type of post files they support and that sort of thing um, and what I finally stumbled on was Autodesk Fusion 360 is amazing because it's free number one I'm cheap and honestly can't afford a lot of these professional packages so Fusion 360 gives you they are free if you are um, a small business making a hundred thousand dollars a year or less an educator or a student education or just for um, a hobbyist so if you fit into any of those three categories which most people watching these types of videos do you can have fusion 360 for free um, you just whenever it prompts you for a license every year you just recheck the box saying yeah I'm, I fit one of these categories it's, it's awesome so that's what I've been using for CAD and CAM so from that point, I can get a toolpath. Um, another thing about Fusion 360, I guess, is that they've got post files for Mach 3. Um, this one is Linux CNC, so they call it EMC2. That's the other name for it. So they got post files for tons of different machines. Um, if you go buy one of these fancy programs, uh, you've really got to do your homework before you buy it because some of them don't come with a big library of post files. And so you've got to go in there, you buy the software, and then separately you have to buy a post file that matches your machine. And the idea is that um, the post file, not all G-code is created equal. Every machine is going to operate a little differently. So that post file takes the uh, toolpath and makes the code that will run specifically on your type of machine. So in case you're wondering what, what I'm talking about with post files. So Fusion 360 is a huge library, it's all free. So at that point, I can get G-Code onto a thumb drive on my Windows-based computer, come over here and uh, plug that thumb drive in. I can take that G-Code, put it on this computer, and I can run the file. So that's, that's amazing to me that yeah, every, every software package I need in this whole chain is free. Things that I like about this setup, definitely the cost. I'm sitting at, with everything you just saw, you're talking $1,500 tops. That would probably include my um, my belt drive conversion on here. About $1,500 and you got a CNC machine. So, especially a CNC, CNC milling machine. Capable of cutting aluminum. You don't see that too often. You might see some of these cheaper, you know, $800 little rinky-dink um, router tables that you're going to be lucky to cut some wood with, honestly. So, and maybe some plastic. So, so for price, this, this is pretty good, 1500 bucks. It's really not a bad deal. What I don't like about it, definitely two major things. Number one, the size. Number two, the rigidity of it. Um, when I say size, I'm talking table travel, to be specific. So this table on the y-axis moves a whopping 3.6, 3.7 inches on a good day. So most of the jobs that I'm seeing out there, and most of the stuff I want to make, you're, you're lucky if it fits on here. You're really lucky. Uh, maybe one out of ten things I see online that someone wants to make I, actually fits my mill, uh, just because of that. And so size is definitely size is probably the biggest thing I don't like about this machine right now. Uh, I can deal with the rigidity. The size is just killing me. But so anyway, rigidity is probably the second or really the only other complaint I've got. Uh, I kind of mentioned it talking about how this bolt is the only thing holding the column on. Um, yeah, with that one bolt, 
it's basically one point and that whole column can sit there and flex. So there's a couple ways that people have done it to fix it. Some people have filled the column because the column's hollow. They fill it with cement. So, you know, fill it with weight. Uh, weight's going to dampen it. Uh, other people have built brackets or try and make that connection more rigid and add some meat there. So that's not a bad idea either. But they're all workarounds and it, it sounds like it helps a little bit, but it's still an issue. These little machines, you're not going to be plowing, you know, huge depths of cut and widths of cut and high feed rates on these things. They're going to be slow. It, it, it is what it is. It's a $1,500 milling machine. Would I build this machine again and, um, now that I've seen it and used it and everything? Um, it's honestly a tough question. Honestly, I'd probably say no. To tell you the truth, the travel is just killing me. Um, for that one reason, um, yeah, travel. When I measure from the center of the spindle to this column, I get six and a half. And so I'm curious why no one seems to be able to make a six and a half inch travel um, base. So that's one thing I really want to research and see. Um, the cost to make one a one-off just might not be worth it. That might be money I just save for another mill. Um, and hint, hint, I got Tormach on the brain right now. I really want an 1100 but they're about $11,000 um, on a good day. So uh, it's a big jump for sure. So that's my setup. I hope that helps on the, the future videos here when you're kind of looking around um, wondering, okay, yeah, he said spindle control works, for example. Hint, hint, that's going to be next week. Um, but I'm not sure why it's not working on mine. Well, you can come back to this video and see, oh, I had a different board or I did something a little bit different and, uh, and kind of try and troubleshoot from there. So I uh, hope this helps. See you next week.